All right, so we've done a lot of work. Uh, the application is pretty much done, except there's a few things that we need to do here. One of which is we need to figure out, we need to implement the delete, because that's the whole reason that we have this trailing listener here, this button or um, this icon. So when they click, we wanna be able to delete the item from the database, but also we wanna be able to remove the row or the card, if you will. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So to delete an item, if you look back in our database client, you see that we have indeed delete. Where is it? Where are you? There we go, delete item. So we can go ahead and delete an item by passing in an ID. So simply we can just invoke our delete item. So inside of our own pointer down here, right now all we have is just this debug print. Of course, this is useless to us. What we want to do is to be able to pass Get rid of all of this. We want to be able to pass a delete no do. In order for us to delete, we need to pass an ID of the item that we're trying to delete. So we need to pass an object, a no to do object. And how do we get that? Well, we get that from going to our list first and then passing in our index. And then because now this would have been our actual object coming from our database, we can then invoke the ID field as such. Okay, in fact, we're not invoking the ID field. It looks like we're invoking the field, but we're getting actually uh, invoking the getter. Uh, let's go back here so I can show you. You know, remember this, we have this getter. So we can say get and get the ID, okay? Very good. So now we're going to have an issue here because we have to actually create it. I'm going to create a method. There we go. We have delete no to do. We're going to pass in an ID, but I'm going to also go ahead and pass in the index. And we'll see in later what the reason why this is going to work. So let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, let's go back to where we are calling this. So if you say command and click on that, it will go ahead and back and uh, it will take us back to where we are calling it. So let's go ahead and pass the index here as well. We'll see why at the later time. Okay, so how do we do all of this? Well, the first thing I like to do is I like to pass a debug print here. That way we actually know what's going to, if it's working. So I'm gonna say delete, deleted item as such. And then here is what I'm, we are going to invoke the await db now i have to go ahead and make sure that i make this a sync or async as you say because we then we're going to be able to use the wait so db dot delete item and i'm going to pass the id which we're passing in our method here okay very good now here's what's going to happen if we run the app and actually go ahead and click on the delete uh, icon so essentially this right this icon here the item will be deleted but now the problem in fact let's let's go ahead and run this and do that we'll see that the item is going to indeed be deleted okay let's go ahead and delete this now it called the deleted item my the problem here is that it's still there so visually speaking even though the system uh, has deleted the item from the database we know this because if we ran this whole app again we shouldn't have beer let's see if that's true and there we go you don't see beer anymore how do we then refresh our user interface here so that the users can actually see that indeed we have deleted the uh the, an item because that's the whole part of user interface, creating something that the user will know that an action was taken and therefore they can see that visually. Well, we go back to the state because remember the set state method allows us to redraw our screen. Okay, now we know that we've deleted it. So in order for us to then redraw our screen, if you remember, we can say set state, okay? Now, whatever we pass in here is gonna go ahead and redraw our screen, so refresh our screen, if you will, so that all the changes are indeed shown. In order for us to be able to redraw, in this case, we just want to emulate the deletion of the item that we have deleted. All right, we're gonna click delete. What we're gonna do, remember we have our item, 
items list, which contains the list of all items from our database, right? Which are being fed into our list view. So we're gonna go ahead and say dot remove at, so we're gonna pass the index. That's the reason why we pass this index here. So it knows exactly what index to remove from the view and redraw it. Okay, so now if you save this, let's give it a quick run again. Okay, so let's look what's going to happen. If I get delete, look at that. Delete it, and we got rid of that whole row. Let's delete this one same. Delete, and it's gone. Go to James, and it's gone. Very cool. So we were able now to actually emulate a deletion, not only in the back end and the database, which is the most important one, but visually as well. All of that is possible for us to do because we understand now right the set state the set state if anything if you don't get anything out of this lecture the set state again it's where we say okay we want to redraw our screen we want to go back and refresh our screen with the new data now if we hadn't put this inside of a set state this wouldn't happen you wouldn't see uh, this happening this deletion if you will uh, removal of the entire row happening Okay, so always think in those terms. You want to redraw the screen, put whatever you want to redraw inside of a set state. Notice you can call as many times as you want the set state if you, whenever you want to redraw things or refresh the screen. Okay, very cool. So to prove to you that this is indeed persisted in the system in our application here, we can go ahead and run again. We should only see again only those two. Look at that. If we delete this one and run again, we should see just one. Very cool. So our database is working. We're able to delete, and we're also able to remove the row uh, from the screen and redraw everything back. Well, this is very exciting. <laughs> so in the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to invoke the update because we want to be able to update any item that we want to update, any of these no to do uh, items. Now, what are we going to do? Because we already have this, I'm going to go back where I'm calling this. You notice that we have on long press, right? Which means what we're going to do is on long press, we want to pop up a another alert dialog where they will be able to add new data or update the data and then save it. And then we're going to update that particular entry. Okay, and we'll do that in the next video.